14th annual Queen Anne's County High School Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Uh, my name is John Marchetto. I am the uh, assistant principal athletic uh, administrator here at Queen Anne's County High School. Um, and it's always a pleasure to be here to, to do this night. Uh, we will first start with uh, dinner. Uh, we're going to have a blessing by Mr. Jeff Anthony, and then we'll begin the ceremonies uh, and the whole reason we're here. Uh, so again, without further ado, Mr. Jeff Anthony. For our... Good evening. Welcome to the Hall of Fame induction tonight. We could uh, bow our heads. I'd like to bless this gathering of inductees, families, and friends as we celebrate the accomplishments of four athletes and one coach. Bless this food and those who have prepared it. Keep our students safe this homecoming weekend and let them make good decisions. In this we pray. Amen. Go Lions. So what we'll do is we'll dismiss by table. Uh, tonight, I believe on the menu is steak and crab cake. So it should be a first time we've got crab cakes. Good evening. And welcome to the 14th annual Queens County High School induction ceremony. We're honored to induct five new members into our hall. They are William Bachtel, Sam Draper, Jake Phillips, Mark Wilhelm, and Matt Olison. You would stand and be recognized. Thank you. As we start the evening, I'd also like to recognize our head table. Uh, first, Dr. Andrea Kane, Superintendent of Schools. Sid Pinder, Chief Operating Officer. Lisa Davis, Chairperson for the Hall of Fame Committee. And in the crowd, we have board member M Michelle Morissette. I'm honored to be a part of this event every year, and it's not because I get to miss Powder Puff, <laughs> but I, I, I truly do enjoy this event. Um, it's great as a history teacher to hear the stories um, about each athlete as they come up here. Um, I was the athletic director here for five years and it, it was great every time to be a part of this and when he asked me to come back and introduce tonight I jumped at the occasion because I do love to hear your stories but it's also good to hear the impact that you had not only on the coaches that you had when you were here but also the students, even today, you hear the names of you know, athletes that have been inducted into our Hall of Fame. So it's a great honor for me to be able to you know, host tonight and induct you into the Hall of Fame. Um, and no matter if it was on the court, if it's on the mat, if it was running the trail, you've had an impact here. And, I, and it's, you know, to have your name come up and you hear this, the students you hear the coaches tell tales about you even today. Um, we, we appreciate everything you've done for the school. And tonight we recognize that. And without further ado, I'd like to invite Dave Cooper up here to give you a little history about the Hall of Fame. Uh, good evening. Um, my name is um, David Cooper. I had the honor and privilege of serving as athletic director here for uh, I think it was 19 years um, and I would like to offer my congratulations to this year's inductees. Um, Bill was a little bit before my time but the three athletes were here when I was here and it was certainly an honor to be able to watch them compete and um, they're all great athletes and, and great people. Um, and also to Mark Wilhelm, I think um, embodies what a high school coach should be. He's a great, great coach here, and I'm, I know he's missed. Um, <clears throat> for the background, in 2005, Rick Thren, who was our uh, longtime soccer coach and uh, teacher of the year, history teacher here at the school, just an icon at, at our school and in our community, approached me about starting an athletic hall of fame. I wasn't really um, 
anxious to take on something else on my plate. Um, but I said, you know, Rick, I think it's a great idea if you're willing to do the legwork, um, you know, please go ahead. And, and he really did that. He researched and, and came up with a set of bylaws. He um, formed the first committee that we had um, and really did, did it all. Um, then in 2006, uh, when we started, as John is saying, it's been 14 years now. Um, in those 14 years, there have been 69 athletes inducted, 15 coaches and 15 supporters, as well as three um, state champion teams. Um, I, I can tell you that <clears throat> after we recovered from the first year's induction ceremony, some of you will remember, um, it lasted until, no kidding, looking at that clock until 11 p.m. So if you think tonight's is running a little long, try to remember that because we won't come close to that. In 2012, um, Rick retired from teaching and coaching and moved to South Carolina. And as chairperson, he was replaced by Marlene Stanton. And Marlene had that position then for seven years and did just an outstanding job. She really stepped the game up. Um, and Marlene, thank you so much for all that you've done to keep things going. And Lisa Davis was gracious enough, maybe in a moment of extreme weakness, to say <laughs> she would take it over because it, it is a labor of love, but there is quite a bit of work involved, but, but it is very, very much worth it. Um, at the induction ceremonies, I, I'm always reminded of how important it is to recognize all the great accomplishments of our inductees, especially when hearing the heartfelt speeches, and I'm sure you'll hear that tonight, of the inductees and the presenters, which shows how very important their experiences in the athletic program at Queen Anne's County High School has been in their lives. It is very moving and certainly makes all of us especially proud of you that have had the opportunity um, pleasure to work with you. So congratulations again to this year's inductees. I, I would put uh, one small plug in um, and how the world works now. We really need um, nominations, um, especially from folks like Bill that going back a few years because as all of us have aged, um, you know, it's harder to remember what has gone on but you can go to the high school website go to athletics there's a hall of fame fame uh, banner click on that and there's a nomination form there we really would like to get some more so you know make our job as the nominating um, selection committee uh, harder than it is now because as i said 69 athletes but when you think of the thousands of athletes that have Participated. There are many, many more uh, people out there that are very deserving. Um, enjoy the rest of your evening, and thanks very much. And before they take off in the back, I don't know about you, but I thought it was a great dinner. If we would give a round of applause to Nona Maria's in the back. Thank you, Mr. Polinski, for dinner before you run out the door. <laughs> um, tonight, our first uh, inductee into the Hall of Fame uh, will be presented by Mr. Dave Stricker, and that will be Matt Olson. Hey, I apologize ahead of time. I'm a Spanish teacher, not an English teacher, so you can attack my grammar later. Um, well, Matt uh, came to the Queen Anne wrestling family uh, with many years of Little League experience. Uh, however, when he came in as a freshman, uh, he was very quiet and didn't have a whole lot to say. Um, we found out years later it was because he was afraid of the current head coach, Mike Blahos, and didn't want to get on his bad side. Um, as he progressed through, college, er, through school, uh, he showed more and more of his personality. Uh, by his senior year, you really couldn't get him to shut up because I... No, I had him in class in Spanish 1 and 2, and he never stopped talking. Uh, 
there's a video of him on uh, YouTube, like everything is on YouTube nowadays, uh, of him screaming out gas prices on our way down to Parkside, uh, much to the amusement of his teammates, um, which kind of gives you an idea of what he was like off the mat uh, as one of our most intense wrestlers on the mat. Um, he was uh, a vocal leader for the team. He was a three-year captain. Uh, he was never afraid to give encouragement to others and help them stay motivated. Uh, he has countless practice partners that he practiced with over the years that ended up becoming state qualifiers and state placers and pretty much became good because of him. Um, as you'll see tonight, a lot of the athletes here, all the athletes here uh, have something in common, that they were willing to do more and go beyond what a normal athlete was willing to do when it comes to practice, to competition, uh, to making themselves successful. Uh, this was most <clears throat> certainly true for Matt. Uh, he wrestled nearly year round for all four years of high school. Uh, after some high school practices, he would go to a club team in Delaware and do another practice. He would stay after practice and run sprints with Coach John and other coaches uh, to perfect his skills. Uh, he was a person who earned all of his success uh, and wouldn't let himself uh, you know, accept failure uh, no matter what the excuse. Um, his hard work paid off. Uh, he finished his high school career with a career record of 157 and 15. Uh, he broke <coughs> Jake's all-time school record for career wins um, during his senior year. Uh, he set the county record as well for career wins. He was a three-time Bayside champion, a three-time regional champion, and at one point during his senior year, he was ranked number 10 in the nation at 195 pounds. Uh, he placed fifth in state as a sophomore when he was really wrestling up one weight class. So he was giving up about 15 pounds to his opponents. Uh, he was then our school's first two-time champion his junior and senior year. Uh, he was a multiple-time uh, freestyle and Greco-Roman All-American, uh, placing sixth, seventh, and fifth in the nation. Uh, he then went on to wrestle for Campbell University, a Division I school, for four years. Um, he was recruited by Kerry Colott, which if some of you don't know, uh, that he's a multiple-time Olympic and world uh, medalist in wrestling. He's pretty much turned their program into going from NCAA sanctions to a legitimate um, national contender. Uh, but despite all the accolades that Matt amassed during his career, uh, one thing kind of stands out the most. Uh, after his junior year of high school, uh, he did win the United States Deaf Olympic Trials, which qualified him to wrestle for the uh, Deaf Olympics. However, after winning it, they found out he was too young to compete uh, worldwide. Um, so he had all these accomplishments, did all this uh, without the ability to hear when he was on the mat. Um, as in, he played football and in wrestling, you gain an advantage by the only way the coaches can help you is by yelling instructions. Uh, so this kind of put Matt at a disadvantage compared to his opponents. Um, in football, uh, he had a great teammate, Brian Darling, uh, who I think actually nominated Matt, uh, created a system of signs where he could relay the plays to Matt. Uh, and obviously in football, they just put him in front of the football, so when he saw it move, he knew he could go. Um, in wrestling, it was a little bit different. Uh, he created his own system of signs with his dad and the coaches, so we were able to communicate with him. Uh, we kind of skirted the rules a little bit, uh, as Jake kind of knows, and Coach John knows. Uh, there's a reason Coach Blahos bought us all bright yellow polos so we could all sit on the four sides of the mat and communicate to him through signing, which in wrestling, you're the corners or your coaches are only supposed to be in the corners. Uh, so he could be, we could communicate with him the whole time, uh, giving him signs and telling him what to do. Uh, but Matt never let his uh, lack of hearing uh, be a disability, uh, as he would say, is kind of his motto. Uh, it's only a disability if you let it keep you down. Um, it was that uh, attitude that allowed him to uh, hold himself to a higher standard and not accept failure, even if people would understand why. Um, he was superior to those in his ability, and he never thought any differently. Um, and Mac, Matt, uh, like Jake, is the kind of wrestler that, as a coach, uh, you'll always remember. Um, Tink reached incredible levels during his wrestling career. Uh, and if you want to kind of picture what it would be like of him accepting this honor, um, I'm kind of picking on Coach Vlahos a little bit too, but um, you can find this on YouTube too if you just do a lot, a slash Vlahos awards at Queen Anne's. 
uh, it's Matt accepting his uh, certificate for breaking Jake's record for career wins. Uh, it's kind of him and Coach Vajos, two uh, guys very uncomfortable with the spotlight, uh, but worthy of their honors. So, thank you. Our, ne our next inductee is William Bachtel, and he's going to be introduced by Nick Desi. Hello, everybody. This is the first time I've been back here since 1977. It's good to be back. I miss it. I miss it here in an awful way. So thanks for have it, having me. And Billy, thanks for giving me the, uh, just really the honor to let me be here for you. Uh, you always served me proud back then in between and, and today. So I appreciate you. I love you. But uh, thinking back now and seeing all of this and taking it all in, 16 miles we drove to school. Now, there's two schools now. Uh, and we had, I was just talking to Gary, and uh, I take this time for myself personally, if you don't mind, Bill. Uh, I would have just had to work at my dad's restaurant and get hollered at a lot more uh, if it weren't for Wendell and, 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 and Gary and Billy to allow a, a kid who's 138 pounds to play middle guard. But I had Wendell on my left. I, I had Gary over to my left playing linebacker. And Billy, I could feel him breathing down my neck. So I got, I got shoved into the plays. And then, and then they would congratulate me. I, don't, I didn't even know what happened. But the idea is that uh, there, was only, there was only, as Gary said, uh, half of us here at, at, at the table tonight, uh, we only had 17 players. And for us to get equipment, I see gift stores here now, and I, to think that we, we went into this room, I don't know if even if, if the uniforms were clean from the year before, but uh, we would get helmets. We had, with, and hopefully we had two earpieces in them that snapped in, <laughs> a face mask that wasn't broken, and a pair of shoulder pads that fit. And, and you picked the jersey that, that, that you could fit into, and pretty much that was your number. Uh, so Wendell, number 88, I think. Gary, number 20. George was 66. Billy, we talked about that earlier, was 30. But he wore every jersey because he'd have to come running back to the sidelines to play quarterback and change his jersey and go back in to play quarterback. And again, it was only 17 of us, and hopefully nobody got hurt because we didn't have anybody else to go in to do that. So we were, we were, we were going both ways in. And, and we held our own. We won, we won, what, two or three games every season? And you know, okay, that was, that was 1978. That, that was 1978. We were not here then. Okay. Gary, is that right? So anyway, uh, but, we, but we had fun and and we were able to we were able to compete, and for that, uh, for being up here, I, Billy, thank you. Because as I wrote, Mark, thanks very much for giving me uh, that that chance to write on Billy's behalf. Because really, there not only there, would there not have been a team, there there really with 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 he and the few people that are here tonight, not excluding myself, uh, we wouldn't even had a team. He saved he saved an entire saved an entire era of football. He changed, so he changed lives. We had things to do. It's not, it's not like today where, where there are so many other options. This is what we did after school. That, that was the only thing that we had to do. So with it, it was, it's not just about what he did for the team. And he was excellent. And like then, he's a salt of the earth kind of person uh, that uh, didn't have much to say then and don't have much to say now. But he got from point A to point B quickly and hard. <laughs> so the idea is that he just got the job done and a, a person, a, a few words, and w regardless of what our record was, he, we, we, had, we, had, we had what I love then, what I love today, we had camaraderie. We did. We had closeness. We had camaraderie, and we stood for something. He allowed us to come in and wear our jerseys on game day, and I, I, I could, for, for what I did and how I contributed or how I saw it, uh, hold my head up like a proud rooster, my chest out. And again, I could always go back to these people and Billy at this table today for that. And I, I'm, I'm thankful for that. And, it's, and, and things that you see today, and I look and I don't recognize, it's a younger person's world. But we're not old. It's just a number. It's just a, but it's, 
I, I go back to times like that where there was closeness and there, there was. So as great as a player as he was, and I said to Mark, I said, you can't have a Hall of Fame and not have this man in it. It's impossible because he, it's not what he did, what his uh, athleticism was, his accomplishments in football, in wrestling, mostly in wrestling, a great wrestler. And then he shared something with me that, that I said, but you were a great lacrosse player. But he says he was, he was 25 pounds lighter then because he had to wrestle at a certain weight. So that's when he found out he had speed too. So he was a great lacrosse player. He just, he excelled in everything he did. And, and for that, and all by itself, he should be here. But he saved, and he did so much more than that. As I said, I don't know if there would have been a team uh, that would have even been, out, been able to go out there and compete and love it and have such closeness and, and such a great time and really let us stand for something. So, Billy, I love you. I loved you then. I love you more now. And thanks for everything. So I'll introduce him right now. He deserves to be here. And we've been talking about this day, and I'm glad to have this day, and I'm glad to have, the, have this time to spend with you. Today is the first day in 28 years for my practice, other than a crisis, that I left it not to treat. I switched everything around. Today was the first day in 28 years, and, and by far it was the best choice. So come on, Billy, come on up. Thank you. Thank you. Like uh, Nick said, I never did speak a whole lot. I was always kind of quiet, but when it was time to play ball, wrestle, do lacrosse, which got it done. Uh, I remember one particular match wrestling, the coach, opposing coach asked the kid, just don't get pinned. Man, the match was a minute, six seconds. It took me a minute to catch him, and six seconds to nail him. <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah, Nick helped when he was in the middle, because I had to run his butt over <laughs> to get to the ball. But, no, we had a good time. We represented our school. We didn't win much, but we gave it our best, our hardest. These kids, when we were kids, we just did it. We got it done. And I appreciate y'all taking the time to ask me to come down here and say a couple things. And that's about really all I have to say. It's just the same way I did sports. I was quiet until it was time to get it done. And that's what I did. Thank you. Our next inductee, Sam Draper will be presented by Mr. Tom Jacob. <clears throat> uh, uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm uh, Sam's uh, twin brother. Um, when we first found out that Sam was inducted, you know, I was super happy for him. We were on vacation in the Outer Banks, and uh, we were talking about it. I was super excited for him. And uh, I think one of us mentioned, you know, I'll give the speech, or Tom, why don't you give the speech? And, you know, <clears throat> That was kind of the end of the conversation <laughs> until I got here tonight and saw who was speaking for Sam, and it was me. So I don't think there's a uh, you know, better uh, story to describe the relationship between Sam and I. I'm super happy uh, for him. He was a heck of a soccer player. Growing up, we always played together. Our dad was a coach, and um, you know we were always super competitive. It wasn't until around probably 10th grade that uh, Sam was, I took a step back and realized Sam was significantly better at soccer than I was. Um, you know, as a sophomore, he was having a great year and he, he uh, you know, he got, he hurt his knee and unfortunately he's out for the rest of the season. Um, but his junior and uh, senior years, uh, he was amazing. Uh, our senior year, uh, I was uh, defensive midi, he was the center midi. I think we won North Baysides that year. And if it wasn't for Sam, truly, I think he scored like four or five game-winning goals uh, that year. If it wasn't for him, we'd probably be a uh, sub-500 team. I mean, he truly carried our team. It was some of the most fun I had playing soccer. You know, he was the center midi. I was the, um, uh, you know, defensive midi. So I always, teams are always coming after him. And I always, you know, I like to 
I was kind of his protector, even though he, he could carry his own. So that, that was a lot of fun. And then his junior and senior year, he played, um, he did track. And it, <clears throat> um, I know he enjoyed track, but it wasn't until uh, his senior year he ended up winning states in the triple jump. He had never done track uh, before that. You know, that's pretty impressive to, you know, do something for a year or two and win states. And when, when I found out that he won, I was like, you know, that's that's impressive. You know, there weren't too many state uh, champions at the school at the time, and uh, you know, and he won it. So that speaks to his athletic athleticism. Um, but he's not just there. He's you know, I'm so happy to call him my brother. He's the man, and uh, you know, couldn't be more proud of him. I just want to give Tom a shout out for scoring the game-winning goal against Ken Island our senior year. <laughs> so that was awesome. A round of applause for Tom. I would also like to thank my family and friends for coming here and supporting me. It's always great being back in Queen Anne's County and just the camaraderie and just being back on the shore is always awesome coming back here. And thank you everyone for coming out and thank you for the nomination. And thank you very much. Our next nominee is Jake Phillips, and I'd like to call Bill Phillips up. Well, I think Jake had me come up to present him because he knows I don't talk well in front of people. So I believe he's punishing me for all the years I gave him a hard time on the mat and on the field. I'd just like to say a few things about Jake. Uh, he's number five. I'm going to get a little emotional. <clears throat> he's number five in our group of six children and all of our children were all athletes they all played high school sports and they all well not all of them but a couple of them went on and, and did their sports in college Jake had to follow this group especially the four older ones because they they picked on him quite a bit and they tormented him and so he figured he was going to be just like them, or better. He's a little bit competitive and he doesn't let people know this. So his goals were to be state champion and to be uh, you know, a high school football star and also a college star in football and in wrestling. He started off his uh, football career at six years old at 37 pounds, playing on a 70 pound triple A uh, team over on the Western Shore. And that same year, he, he wasn't allowed to play, but they suited him up and they put him into scrimmages and they put him into uh, all these extra games. And uh, that team was called the Bowie Bulldogs. Well, he was the first official puppy pounder because he was t just ferocious on a football field. That same year, he wanted to wrestle, like his brothers. He goes in, and, and we signed him up for the Southern Maryland League, and he wrestled in the 55-pound weight class, which was the lightest weight class. And he had one loss, and he avenged that loss in the finals. Going on, he went all the way through middle school, elementary school, middle school, traveling, going to football camps, wrestling camps, wrestling, and he finally made it to high school. He goes into high school, plays uh, football, and he wrestled 119 pounds. And so his goal was to be a varsity football player for four years. Well, it didn't happen until his sophomore year, and that year he started an inside linebacker at 135 pounds, because that's what he wrestled. His biggest thing with Jake and what we're so proud of is his hard work. He would hit the weight room, he'd try to get faster, he'd try to get bigger. Then when it came to wrestling, he would wrestle with his coaches all the time after practice. He'd do extra runs, get up in the morning and run at 5 a.m. And uh, he sometimes he would falter a little bit, but he would always bounce back. And uh, again, his senior year of wrestling, uh, this is a stat that's not in the book. He only gave up 
one takedown the entire season. He gave up no reversals and 13 escapes. And those escapes were given up because he let the guy up so he could take him down again. Again, I'd like to present, uh, present Jake Phillips. Like everybody else, I'm uh, a man of a few words. Um, thanks, Dad, for doing that. You got me all teary-eyed. Um, thanks to everybody that came out tonight. Um, special thanks to Dave and, and John. They were my wrestling partners, along with Patrick Klenkel, who should be in the Hall of Fame as well. Um, I remember distinctly uh, wrestling with... Uh, with John every single day, trying to beat him. This is back when we were both younger and slimmer. <laughs> um, but I always, I always wanted to be that state champion. Uh, I wanted to be that next state champion at Queen Anne's County. It didn't come to fruition, but I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that I came and uh, wrestled for this for this school. Um, a lot of memories uh, that I had with this school um, and uh, football as well. I mean, we uh, went undefeated for the first time in the regular season my senior year, I believe it was. Um, and I would never, never give that up. I mean, that Some of those memories that we had for those football teams and the wrestling teams, especially wrestling, coming in my freshman year, we only ended up with three get three wrestlers on the team, three or four wrestlers on the team by the end of the season. Um, okay, is that when we shaved Mike's head? Yeah. Um, we had a bet uh, with Coach Vlahos that year. If, if we won five matches, he'd let us shave his beautiful head of hair. And uh, we did. We, our, last <laughs> dual meet, our last dual meet, we ended up winning by one point. And the next day, I got that first shave right, right down the center. Um, just some of those memories were, were, were awesome. Going down to Senior Nationals, driving down eight hours, uh, going down to Virginia Beach for those Nationals. That, I mean, some of those times were, were the best. Um, and no, I'm not going to share any of those stories. Uh, But I would like to thank everybody out that uh, came out tonight. Thanks for uh, nominating me for this, uh, this nice award. Thank you. Our last inductee of the night is Mark Wilhelm. And I get the honor to induct him into the Hall of Fame. Mark is being inducted for 19 years as a cross-country coach. Uh, this recognition is a great honor for Mark as he is also a former athlete and graduate of Queen Anne's County High School. He takes great pride in this school and has helped and felt privileged to represent it as a coach. Mark has had an impressive career. He had 115 wins. His team won six Bayside championships and were Bayside runner-up 12 times and qualified for the Maryland State Championship 23 times. You have to remember there's boys and girls teams, and he's the coach of both of them. This included a 10-year consecutive qualification by the women's team from 2009 to 2018. Mark was selected as Midshore Coach of the Year five times and the Q8 Queens County Public School Coach of the Year of 2015-2016. What many don't know about cross country is that it's considered a corollary sport which means everyone is accepted on the team regardless of your ability and no one is cut. And I see there's a problem there. As an as a athletic director, I see one coach, 60 people. That's a lot of people that he, he had to deal with. And he took all kinds. Um, he took many with special needs, um, many with you know, different struggles in school, and he took them as, as his own. He treated them all the same. And each year he built a team that was not only successful, but was the epitome of a team. The students worked together, they supported one another, 
and felt a strong sense of belonging. From the student who ran a six minute mile to a student who walked the course and finished in 40 minutes. They were there for one another, cheering each other on, going back onto the course and finishing side by side. These students represented the high school with great sense of pride on and off the field. More often than not, they carried the highest GPA in the school. They made National Honor Society, won scholarships, and went off to college. Mark has had an amazing career with great statistics, but perhaps his greatest legacy has been the honorable men and women that he helped to shape and develop. The life lessons he has taught, respect, courage, acceptance, perseverance, honor, and loyalty are ones that will resonate forever. It is a great pleasure to introduce Mark Wilhelm. Well, thank you very much. <clears throat> I can still not think about the right words that truly describe what it means to be inducted into the Queen Anne's County Athletic Hall of Fame. I coached for 19 seasons, but Queen Anne's has been a part of my life for almost 45 years. We moved to Centerville in December of 1973. I attended my first football game and walked in my first homecoming parade as a little leaguer in the fall of 1974. I watched my oldest brother, Kurt, play tennis, as well as my brother, Eric, who wrestled, played football and lacrosse at Queen Anne's. I even got to be a ball boy for Mr. Campbell's lacrosse teams. I got to travel with Mr. Schiphol's wrestling team as a manager. I even got to be a member of the chain gang for some of the varsity games, even before I got to high school. In 1978, I finally entered Queen Anne's County as a freshman. I was a starter on the JV team. I was as intimidating as a 105 pound outside linebacker could be. Coach Dougherty had us believing we were invincible. He had us pumped up, believing in ourselves. We lost 60 to nothing to Cambridge in my first game. We did get better though, because three weeks later we only lost 48 to nothing. <laughs> All I can say is thank God for Colonel Richardson and Easton, or it would have been a long season. I learned a lot that season, but was happy when wrestling started, or so I thought. Wrestling JV meant getting beat on by the varsity all week long, dieting to make weight, and then hoping that the other team had someone for you to wrestle. I'll never forget my first match. After three weeks of waiting, some team called Stephen Decatur from an exotic place called Woochester County had a wrestler for me. I got pinned in the first period. My athletic career really did not improve much from there. I was part of the first winning JV football team with a five and four record my sophomore year but had a combined three and 17 record my junior and senior year on varsity football. Wrestling was a little better, I won a couple medals, but finished with an 18, 12, and one record my last three years. Now I know what you're thinking right now, what is this guy doing up here and how did he get into the Hall of Fame? <laughs> I ask myself that question a lot, obviously not for my athletic ability, but what happened was over the years is you're influenced by people. And you take that in, in from, you know, influence, this person, this person, people who influence you who don't even know it. And I was so happy to see Wendell Burke walk in because Wendell, in my senior year, uh, came back to speak at our football banquet. And Wendell was talking about all this losing stuff that he did, but he kept saying, I know how to lose, but I'm not a loser. And I keep thinking, was it the... He was an all-American, um, uh, academic all-American at Dell State. They made it to the playoffs, played Portland State, I think it was, and lost 105 to nothing. <laughs> and I just remember him saying, you know, I know how to lose, but I'm not a loser. And that always stayed with me, so I was so happy when I saw him walk in tonight so I could tell him what it, you were one of those people who you may never have realized it, but you influenced someone. So I ended up graduating, went to the University of Maryland, came back to Queen Anne's to watch my friends play various sports. My sister played field hockey, my youngest brother wrestled and played lacrosse. After graduating from Maryland, I worked at Goddard Space Flight Center in their, hitness, in their fitness lab for two years while I was working on my teaching certification. As luck would have it, an opening for a PE teacher became available in January of 1988 at Centerville Elementary School. I interviewed and was offered the position, and I got a chance to come back home. In 1992, I volunteered to help 
with the cross country team. I didn't know much about cross country other than it involved running. Three weeks into the season, the head coach resigned and Mr. Cooper asked me if I would take over. Didn't even know how to score a cross country meet at the time. Second best decision I made that year. I also, in the middle of the season, proposed to my wife, Jackie, who ironically enough, it was 27 years ago tonight. And I coached from 1992 to 99, resigned to spend more time with my son, Andrew, and daughter, Alex, who were starting to get involved with Little League Scouts and Dance. When Andrew reached the high school in 2008, he wanted to run cross country, so I happened to see Mr. Cooper again in Target on a Sunday afternoon and said, could I be an assistant coach or do you want a volunteer coach? He made me head coach again. <laughs> So during the night, and so that was, you know, like I said, you're taking all these, you know, little bits of information and, you know, that's, I don't have, a, you know, some people go, well, you know, what did you like about cross country? It was just being with the kids. And during the 19 seasons that I coached, I was blessed with the opportunity to meet so many great kids from all different backgrounds and abilities. I'm still in contact with many of them, and living in a small town, you know, you're walking around, you go to Price and Gannon, and there's a 35-year-old kid calling you coach still. So definitely advantages to living in the small town. And I stayed around long enough that I even got to coach a couple kids of the kids that I coached early on. There are so many people I need to thank for making this possible. First, my mom and dad, who have supported not only me, but my children. They attended everything we did, and regardless of the outcomes, for something they would have something positive to say. I'm not going to mention the Kent County incident. <laughs> Inside family joke. I got in trouble for that one. Um, I could not have asked for better parents, so thank you so very much for all your support. My children, Andrew and Alex, who both ran cross country and helped me to see coaching from a parent's point of view and also from um, the runner's point of view instead of just as a coach. I'm not sure if they ever realized it, but they made me a much better coach in the end. Then finally my wife Jackie, who unfortunately couldn't be here tonight, um, whose name should be on the plaque with mine also. She supported me no matter what, put up with summer practices, Saturday meets, late night returns from Salisbury, phone calls at all hours, good moods, bad moods, and everything in between. I could not have done it without her, nor would I ever want to. Also, thank you to all the amazing runners who allowed me to be their coach and friends. It was an amazing honor for me to be included with so many of my former coaches who influenced me, the athletes who I looked up to when I attended Queen Anne's County High School, and the athletes who I've taught and coached um, since then. It is just beyond words to be included here. I'd also like to thank, I'm glad yeah, Kim A.G. is here. She was my assistant coach for eight years. And um, it, I mean, amazing, a lot of years I didn't have an assistant coach. As our numbers got larger, she stepped up and, and it was just an amazing job. So Kim, thank you for coming. I stand here appreciative of all the people who have helped me reach this point. I cannot thank them all here, but I look forward to running into them, crossing paths, and I promise I will thank them personally each and every time. Thank you again for this great honor. Before I close it up, I'd like Marlene to come up here. <laughs> Just a little something for all your help, all your dedication. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, on behalf of myself, I would like to thank the many individuals that made this evening happen, especially Miss Betty Lee. It's truly a collaboration of many and our teamwork shines through. We would also like you, the public, to remind us of those graduates who are deserving of this Hall of Fame award. Please pick up a nomination form at the conclusion of the evening and they can be found on that table out there in the hallway. Um, we'd also like for many of you to consider joining the Queen Anne's County High School Alumni Association. Many of us here tonight have graduated from Queen Anne's County High School and what better way to display your pride than becoming a member of a fantastic organization, one in which has given thousands of dollars in scholarship support to members and direct descendants. 
In closing, on behalf of the Hall of Fame Committee, we want to thank everyone for coming tonight and remind you to please take a moment to look at our Hall of Fame display cases located down the hallway on the right, and it can truly be a walk in time. Thank you. If before uh, you leave, if I could have all the inductees, we'd like to get a picture of all of you together out in front of the display case. Uh, it also allows uh, parents and uh, guests to take pictures as well. Uh, so if you would do that for. Also, uh, if you're planning on attending the football game tomorrow, we encourage all of you to come. We'd love you all to come. Uh, we're going to introduce all our inductees at 645 at the football stadium. So if you would come around 630, we'd like to get you lined up. And then at 645, we'll uh, introduce you uh, to the crowd of the game. All right? And so at this time, thank you again for coming, and have a great evening. for the state championship. Mark was also named Midfield Coach of the Year five times. And Queen Anne County High School Coach of the Year in 2014, 2015. Mark has taught in Queen Anne County for 32 years. Ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2019 Hall of Fame inductees. Give them a round of applause. Number three, Junior Pete Lemon. Number four, Junior Anthony Ritz-Turizzi. Number seven, Senior Xavier Mamamamuchi Number 20, Senior Tyler Tyler! <laughs> Number 50, Junior Tyson Houser! <laughs> Number 51, Junior Lewis Guinea! Number 52, sophomore, Peggy Bustoni! Number 55, Senior Jack Stevens! Number 64, Senior Nick Tyson! Come on out!